Good morning and welcome to our third editorial video. Um, we've had two successful videos so far talking about fluid effects and 3D typography. However, today we're going to be talking about asymmetric layouts. However, before we move on to that, there's one thing that we want to talk about and that has been Masterclass. So this is something that we've just launched on the website. It's coming in March and we briefly um, gave a sneak peek in the last video. However, we didn't really go into what it actually was. However, in the next coming months, we want to roll out a set of workshops. So these will be physical workshops that are be very affordable and we want to basically teach beginnings of design and we want to tackle topics that people have always wanted to know about. So we always get asked about Adobe, how to draw, how to uh, start off with the design, how to be inspired. So all these different topics will be explored within the workshops. So these will these are currently being worked on. We haven't got specific dates yet. However, we will be posting them shortly. The page on the website will explain everything that we uh, will be offering because we do know what topics we're going to do. We're just still trying to do all the logistics and get all the dates confirmed. However, we do have everything on the website. So link will be in the description. So that is the first tea of today. Now, the main tea that we want to get into is asymmetric layouts. So what are they? In a normal design, um, whether it's posters or online or anything of the sort, you'd use something like a grid. So this grid will keep all the design and all the elements on the page to, to some degree symmetrical and keep them in line with a grid. However, in recent months and going into 2019, a lot of designers are abandoning this grid and just going for something asymmetric. So I'm going to pop up an example on the screen now. Well, I'm somewhere. And this is um, something that would be probably classed as a symmetric layout. So something that has been following a grid system. And to the other side, somewhere, um, is an asymmetric grid. So this is what is happening recently. So people just abandoning the grid altogether and going for something new. Now, if you haven't noticed the theme with our videos already, 2019 is a revolution in design. In many ways, designers abandoning rules, getting rid of grids, getting rid of the old style of things, and just making their own rules. And a lot of the topics that we're going to cover are explaining how and why people are doing this. And asymmetric layouts are probably one of the biggest parts of this rule breaking because the whole basis and foundation of the design that people do rely on grids. So when you relinquish the need for a grid, it allows a whole plethora of designs that you could do. So from the examples, these are web-based examples. So asymmetric design can apply to anywhere, but it's definitely present in the web space. So a lot of websites are going for very fluid designs, which we described last week, and opting for objects that float around, don't actually follow a system. They more follow an algorithm more than a grid system. So what's the benefits of an asymmetric system? Why, do, why are people abandoning all the grids and rules? Well, first of all, people get bored. We live in a world where people get bored very easily. The detail in a minute, but this just didn't have any pigment and uh, I'm bored. If it doesn't grab you straight away, then I'll just continue scrolling and your chance is over. Uh, designers' jobs are becoming a lot harder because they need to really, really grab the attention of the user when they're using social media or the app or the website. So asymmetric design can come in really handy because it just looks completely different. So we are instantly drawn to something that looks different or obscure or strange. So when we see something that looks very odd, doesn't look very symmetrical, doesn't look very orderly, then we will go and naturally go to it. So this is another example, uh, somewhere around my face, um, of a asymmetric website. And they use a lot of color differences. So when one color goes into another color and then it changes. So for example, um, 
we'll throw up our recent Instagram post. So the TES, the when the when the word goes into the purple, all the bits covered in purple turn black, and then the purple remains purple outside that grid. So it re retains its shape, but the color changes. So there'll be a better definition somewhere. I'll try and find it and put it somewhere. But that's basically what it is. And this website uses a ton of that. And the main reason why is because it grabs your attention. It shows a journey. So this is where this sort of UX design comes in, the experience of things. So the difference in the color changes actually take you through a journey of the website. So you will start from the left and then you'll scroll over to the right and then everything just locks in well, even though it doesn't really follow a grid. So just because it may not follow a certain rule or certain metric doesn't mean that it's going to look really messy and everything's here, there and everywhere and just scattered across the page. It doesn't work like that. Asymmetric design can still look very, very orderly, yet not be connected to any grids. So in that respect, lots of people use animations. So this website in particular uses tons of animations. So when you scroll through a page, the colors will change, the colors will sweep over the screen and the words will blow up. And it, it's a very, very, very graphic intensive website. So in ways it's kind of a downfall for them because if you haven't got a very graphically powerful uh, PC or phone, then it might not come up as well. Um, but if you do, then it just looks drop dead gorgeous. It's stunning. And how, what the, the benefits of this is, is again, it shows a journey. So if you click something, it's like you're delving into something. It's not all static. It's not all stuck on the screen. It's not all just rehashed design. It's very much from scratch, from the very beginning, creating your own story. And this is exactly the design that I'm very happy is coming through because Design can, design can over the years sort of rehash itself. So a lot of old things are coming back. A lot of new things are going away and then they'll come back in another 10 years time. However, this type of design is very, very different. So we're living in a world where things are just run by people. And when they're done that way, you'll see so much more authenticity and so many more different perspectives on what you can do with a page. An A4 sheet of paper is just a sheet of paper until you actually do something with it and then make it your own. So this type of design really opens the doors for people to just play around a bit. Design is fun. Design doesn't have to be boring. Design is all about changing things and making things work and exploring how one thing can do one thing and another do another. So it's it's all it's all um, exploratory and that's why I love this type of design. So as we described in the text-based article that this video is based on, um, you when you're talking about this type of uh, design method you have to sort of think of certain questions in your mind when you're doing it. So for example what's going to happen if you uh, go to the left? What happens when you scroll around? Is it going to is it going to follow the same type of design that Microsoft is following? So the fluent design, um, where the cursor goes around and lights follow the cursor, is the cursor going to ignite certain effects? Uh, are, are, are you scrolling? Is scrolling going to happen? Are you going to scroll? A lot of websites now don't even scroll anymore. They just things fly around, and it's just really weird. But it's really, really cool. Like we've, we've had scrolling since the dawn of time, yet we're changing that with design. So that's the beauty of this. You know, the world is your oyster. And this is the type of thing that we like to experiment with. However, don't be fooled. It's not an easy design method either. So although you are the one in control and you are the one doing all the um, thinking and all the where is everything going to go, you still need to think of the person who's going to use it. When you're doing this type of method, you must make sure it's not too confusing. It's not too different because if you throw, uh, if you have a website that just scrolls and then you update it with this whole new method, you may alienate users. People might get turned off by it. They'll be like, okay, I, I used to be able to scroll. Now when I scroll, bubbles fly around and there's a little fairy that comes on the screen like you know it's you need to be careful when you're doing this cut this kind of thing so really make sure that you do your research because 
nothing is worse than putting in so much time and effort and energy into creating something that's different and bold and new and fantastic and then you launch and then flops. <laughs> it's always gonna be a risk. That's why I love doing business and doing design. It's, it's a risky business. However, you can minimize that risk by just knowing who your end user is. So by all means, go out there, be different, break the mold. However, really be careful that you don't alienate users because you can be at risk of doing that if you do something too drastic and too different. So that is it for this editorial. So I hope you like this video. We have got a lot more coming. Uh, we have got stuff about tones, about duo tones coming. We've got a lot more stuff. We've got a part two of darkness. So the whole dark wave taking over user interfaces. We have got tons of stuff and we're also working on the master classes like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So we are busy as hell. So really make sure you keep um, having a look at our YouTube channel. Um, subscribe, like this video. You can do the little bell things to get notifications when we post videos. Because we do have a how-to coming soon, which is not an editorial series, but it's just a how-to video. Um, and yeah, we hope you enjoyed the video. Sound off in the comments. What do you think? Do you have you seen any websites that are very different? Have you got any examples you'd like to show us? Because we like to be inspired. Um, so yeah, definitely ask us questions. Sound off in below and like and subscribe. And until next time.